Hi everyone, my name is Smiley and Miss Tammy and I are going to talk about identifying heart failure. Um, so about 5.7 million people in the United States are, are diagnosed with heart failure. That's why education is very important to prevent, manage, and for those who are at risk at heart failure. Um, people who are at risk at heart failure have coronary artery disease, have had a heart attack in the past, um, they have thyroid issues, hypertension, they smoke, uh, drink alcohol, do drug abuse, or diabetic, or any other heart issues. Um, so to understand heart failure, um, heart failure occurs whenever your, uh, your heart is not pumping enough blood for your entire body. As a result, your body does not get enough food, oxygen, and blood. Um, as a result, your heart uh, compensates by enlarging, increasing the muscle mass, or pumping faster so that your, heart, your body gets enough um, blood. But as a result, though, so your heart does not, it, it still enlarges and it causes worsening of the heart failure. Because um, usually what your, what your heart does is it pumps effectively, has a full full pump for your whole body, But because your heart's a muscle. So when it, when it does not um, work efficiently, then your, your blood is not getting accolade to your body. Um, signs and symptoms of heart failure include fatigue, shortness of breath, edema in the lower extremity, weight gain, uh, confusion, cough, and tachycardia. So um, for our case study, we did a 6 year one man. He arrived to the hospital with two complaints of shortness of prone breath upon exertion and persistent cough. He's been coughing about for two weeks and he states that it is productive and has pink tinged mucus. So his past medical history includes hypertension, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, chronic back pain from a previous motor vehicle accident and had empidectomy. His home medications include lisinopril, Lipitor, and Neuropril. Um, he states that his family history is hypertension, hyperlipidemia, heart attack, and colon cancer. He says that he is a smoker, he lives a sedentary lifestyle, and he, co he commonly eats fast food. So, um, physician orders the following things for Mr. Smith. They order a chest x-ray, an echocardiogram, EKG, a stress test, and some blood work, BMP, C, CBC, BMP, TSH, lip panel, and cardiac enzymes. Um, the test results show the following things. The chest x-ray shows an enlargement of the heart, a cardiomegaly. Um, an echocardiogram shows an ejection fracture of 44%, so his heart is not be, uh, pumping enough blood as shown. His EKG shows sinus rhythm with occasional PVCs. Um, the laboratory results show a BVP of 224, which is high for him, which may indicate uh, heart, heart failure. His CBC panel with wind normal lens and also his BMP, BMP panels are long with lens. Um, TSH is 0 0.3, which is a little elevated also. Cardiac enzymes are CK is 340, um, troponin level is 1.4. His level panel is LDL is 181, is a little high too, and HDL is 51. So I'm gonna move on to this Tammy. Hi, I'm Tammy, and I'm gonna be speaking about what happens to Mr. Smith when he arrives on our floor. So he makes it up to our med surge unit. He still is a little short of breath and still coughing a little bit, um, but his biggest complaint right now is that he's starving because they didn't feed him in the ER. So his initial assessment, his respiratory rate is 24, heart rate 92, sinus um, O2 sat 94. He does have some bibasal arrhythmia, some peripheral edema, and a little bit of JVD. So what we're going to first do with Mr. Smith is um, encourage him to elevate the head of bed greater than 30, 30 degrees. Um, have him elevate his legs above his heart. And we're going to go ahead and order him a cardiac 2 gram sodium diet and begin on CSJ education. What are some important topics to be included in CSJF education? And my second question is why does CHF education need to be started so early in Mr. Smith's admission? So for CHF education topics, we'll need to be discussing um, limited activity while he's having an active exacerbation of his CHF, um, sodium, two gram sodium diet, fluid restrictions, to any new medications he may be placed on, 
He needs to know about weighing himself daily and the signs and symptoms of CHF and worsening CHF. Um, this diagnosis is a new diagnosis for Mr. Smith, so he's going to need some time and re-education so that he's able to understand all of the information that's out there and that we're trying to teach him. So next, um, while, while you're in with one of your other patients, Mrs. Smith brings her starving husband some Popeye's fried chicken, french fries, and a gallon of sweet tea. Um, when you go in to check on Mr. Smith, he also asks for another pitcher of water because he's already had two pitchers full and is still thirsty. Um, shortly afterwards, Mr. Smith calls the nurse's station claiming to hardly be able to breathe. So you reassess Mr. Smith and his respiratory rates increase to 30. Um, he's having some sinus tachycardia, so 2 sat is down to 89. His respirations are even and labored, and he has increased by basilar rails. He still has a JVD, but now he's a little pale and diaphoretic, and his blood pressure is up to 160 over 90. So, as a nurse, we would need to go ahead and notify the physician of any changes that he's had and administer any of the medications and the treatments that the physician orders. Then we would need to take, take some time to reinforce the education on the low salt diet and the fluid restriction to Mr. and Mrs. Smith and any other family he may have in the room. At that time, we would ask Mr. Smith to um, please take it easy in bed with his head elevated until um, his symptoms ease. So my first question is, what medical intervention might the physician order? Next, I have, what do you think caused the worsening of Mr. Smith's CHF symptoms? And final question is, do you think Mr. Smith has a good understanding of any education presented so far? So the first question, um, possible MD orders. Maybe some Lasix, maybe some Atoprolol for the blood pressure, maybe some Digoxin to help with contractility, maybe some O2, and then he may want to start him on continuous cardiac and O2 SAT monitoring if he hasn't already, and possibly even a chest x-ray. Um, excessive salt and overconsumption of fluids are two possibilities for causing an exacerbation of his CHF. Um, and, and he more than likely did not understand any of the teaching that we had started with him so far. Um, and he really hasn't been up to the floor too long, so he definitely needs reinforcement. So stage three, after the interventions, Mr. Smith finally begins to breathe a little bit easier. His respiratory rate is down to 20. His O2 set is 96%. His respirations are even and labored. His breath sounds are clear. His J JVD has disappeared. And his blood pressure is down to 130 over 78. And he had a total of two liters of urine output after the late six the doctor gave him. So at this point, when things have kind of settled down, we need to encourage more education with him. Um, we need to start talking about lifestyle changes, um, cardiac rehab, exercise, with him and his family. And we need to get them very involved in that and make sure they fully understand. Um, we need to, you know, take him off of bed rest, let him start slowly uh, being up and around in the room a little bit. And then we must, we need to start education on his home medications. So for stage three, what lifestyle changes should be discussed with the Smiths? What medications can you expect Mr. Smith to possibly be discharged with? What other discharge education will be needed? So Mr. Smith will need to consider weight loss, 
He will need to change his diet to a two gram sodium diet. He will need to stop smoking and he will need to begin an exercise program developed with his physician or with cardiac rehab. Um, he, it may be expected that he will go home on a diuretic, possibly a beta blocker and an ACE and R. And we need to, we need to be looking for community resources for this gentleman, such as support groups, um, any home health. He'll need medication education and the importance of compliance. We'll need to teach him about daily weights. He needs to know that he can only, if he gains more than two pounds in a day, then he needs to call his doctor. Um, we need to make sure he knows all the signs and symptoms of worsening CHF and when to notify his physician, his physician for any symptoms. And we need to get him going on a cardiac rehab program. Thanks, have a good day.